So what does it mean to analyze something? What does it mean to analyze it? To scan it? Uh, scan it is just kind of like, okay, I'm just looking over it. When you analyze something, you're like critiquing it, right? You're looking at it closely. You're trying to read and understand it. What does it mean to sketch something? To draw it. To draw it. Okay, so um, let's check out what we are looking at today with analyzing and sketching graphs. So graphs can show the relationship between quantities. That's what chapter 6 and chapter 7 uh, really showed us, how our X and our Y values relate to each other. But in this lesson, you don't have to have necessarily a specific number. So do you see how your time and your distance, there's no numbers on those lines? Do you guys see that? All we're doing is, we're saying, as the time goes on, my distance increases, and then it flattens out. So I don't really, maybe I stop for a water break right here. Okay, so I was increasing my distance, then I stopped for a water break, and then my distance, um, maybe I'm hiking a mountain or something. And then I descend. So I'm talking about the relationship in terms of increasing, no change at all, or decreasing. Okay, so let's look at example one. I want you to describe the changes in temperature in each city. Okay, so you're going to write an explanation for the decrease in temperature and the increase in temperature in Newport, Oregon. So let's start with the first thing that it asks us. I have two cities. All right, can everybody see that in your notes? I got Belfast, Maine, and Newport, Oregon. All right, and I want to describe the changes in temperature. Okay, so what do you see happening to the temperature? As the time goes on in the day, what do you see happening to the temperature? It is gradually increasing. Isn't that a normal day? Right? In the morning, it starts off cold. Like this morning, what was the temperature this morning when we got up? It was cold. It was like in the 30s, I think. And then, but what's our high today? Like 64-ish? Like yeah, 65. So that's what's happening in this city too. Okay? Um, the temperature, so here's how I describe it. All right, the temperature, you can abbreviate temperature, gradually, okay? So it's not like it just shot up 30 degrees within an hour. No, it was a gradually uh, increased. Then gradually decreased. You're just describing the change. That's all you're doing. Uh, we'll say throughout the day. What time do you think uh, the temperature normally reaches its peak? Like in Jacksonville. What time is the hottest time of the day usually? Yep. I would say usually it's around 3 or 4 o'clock. Um, it depends. In the summertime, I feel like the hottest time of the day is like 4 o'clock. Because um, you have daylight a little bit longer. Um, so, you know, basically maybe the starting time is 7 a.m. And then it reaches its peak at like 3 p.m. But remember, there are no values. I'm just trying to help you guys understand how this curve is progressing throughout the day. And maybe the bottom part down here is at like 8 p.m. But again, the times don't really matter. It's just that we understand what the temperature, how it fluctuated throughout the day. So let's look at Newport, Oregon. This is an interesting graph for the temperature. Okay, has anybody ever, now we had a couple of days like this recently. When you woke up, okay, and then it actually, like the temperature when you woke up was the highest temperature it was going to be for the day. And then it actually goes down, 
right? Like we've had a few days like that in Jacksonville where we woke up and it was like 50 and then it actually got colder throughout the day. Um, that's what's happening here. All right. So the temperature, what do you think? Do you think the weather is good in Newport, Oregon? If you wake up and the temperature actually goes down as the morning progresses, no, this is definitely like a snow day or a stormy day. Do you guys see that? All right, so let's describe it. The temperature decreases. You could say in the morning, um, although there's no time on the x-axis, you know that it's early in the day. So we could just say early in the day. It decreases early in the day. Then what happens? What's that straight line mean? Stays then it remains the same. So you could say stays the same, remains constant. All right, then remains constant for a time, for a short time. You need to tell me about how long that looks like. So I would say for a short time. Then the clouds part, and you don't have to say that part. Then the temperature increases. So maybe that storm has passed, the sun comes out, and the temperature increases later in the day. The more descriptive you can be, the better. All right, so all we're doing is describing the change that we see on the graph. It's a sharp decrease early in the day. So they definitely have some bad weather. Then it remained constant for a short time and then it increased later in the day. All right, any questions? This is gonna be on your quiz Friday and it'll be on your test next week. This like exact example where you describe the changes occurring. All right, write an explanation for the decrease in temperature. Okay, so that's what we just talked about. What could cause the temperature to decrease when it's supposed to actually increase? We said it was a, a stormy day, okay? So write an explanation. I would say there could have been a storm. All right, a storm would cause... So naturally, as the day progresses, my curve should look like it did in Belfast, Maine. So what would make it decrease like that would definitely be bad weather. All right, so there could have been a storm. And then the storm passed. All right, so now I want you to practice one. So over here, we have the path of a pelican. We have the pelican's vertical distance from the ground, or you could say from the ocean, and then the horizontal distance. So I want you to describe what you see happening with the path of the pelican, all right? And then I want you to answer number two. Write an explanation for this decrease. What do you think is happening with the pelican? Why do you think uh, their vertical distance is decreasing? All right, so describe the path and then give me an explanation for why you think it would decrease. All right, not everybody wants. Your descriptions look good. They look good. Anybody? All right, Tristan, what'd you say? Mm hmm Okay. So um, the height that he's flying, so pelicans, vertical distance, if you just said, like, height, that's fine. Um gradually decreases so that's what it that's what it kind of starts off like gradually decreasing but then it's it's actually a pretty sharp decrease isn't it so i'm just going to say um sharply decreases then levels off towards the ground all right, so something along those lines. Obviously, it doesn't have to be word for word, but again, the more detailed you are, the better. All right, then it kind of leveled off towards the ground. So what were your reasons why? What's your explanation 
for why his flight pattern might be this way. Talanda? A plane was coming. A plane was coming. So he's flying and he sees that plane coming, so he takes a dive. All right, very good. What's another one? Taylor? Yeah, very good. So he sees a fish in the water, so he descends quickly. He wants to grab that fish. Miley? Okay, you got tired or hurt. Very good. Any others? What could be the reason for a sharp decline? Most of y'all said something about catching a fish, which is perfect. That's exactly what I would say. All right, so it could be a she, he or she. Okay, uh, saw a fish and wanted to catch it. All right, just some reason. You guys are doing really well. Any questions on that? So you're going to draw your own in the next example. <clears throat> so you're going to sketch one. <clears throat> a subway train gains speed at a constant rate until it reaches its maximum speed. It travels at this speed for a while and then slows down at a constant rate until coming to a stop at the next station. So you're going to sketch a graph. All right. So I want you to draw a vertical line. That's a tiny line. Let me see if I can increase that. Draw a vertical line. And then I want you to draw a horizontal line. It needs to be a little bigger than that. Okay, vertical and horizontal. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so the vertical axis will be speed. All right, so speed and then um, the horizontal looks like it's gonna be time. So the time from when it started to when it stops at the next station. All right, so this is the template that I would give you. Now I need you, again, there's no numbers, there's no values, all right? But would you start it off and would you decrease? Would you make it constant? Would you increase? Is that what it's explaining? Would you increase and then do a sharp decrease? Is that what the problem's explaining? Obviously, I want it a little neater than that. Okay, so it says a stopped subway train. So where do you think your line is going to start if it's stopped? Down there in that bottom corner because it's stopped. All right, so a stopped subway train gains speed at a constant rate until it reaches its maximum speed. So I'm just gonna draw it gaining speed. All right, there's my first part. Then it travels at this speed for a while. So how do you think I could represent that part? Would it be a straight across line? Would it still continue to go up? What do you guys think? It just goes straight across because it stays at that speed for a while. Doesn't say how long. So let's just, you know, obviously we're not gonna draw it teeny tiny or super huge. Then what happens? It slows down at a constant rate. So do you think your line goes up from here or down from here? Mm -hmm. Down from here until it comes to a stop. There you go. You're done. Not so bad. Not so intimidating. It looks a little weird when you first look at it, but all you're doing is describing, all right, or you're just showing it on a graph, basically how the values relate to each other. Okay, so modeling real life. This graph shows the distances traveled by two runners in a race from start to finish. I want you to describe the speed of each runner and then determine who is going to finish first. All right, so I want you to do runner A. So I want you to just write runner A. And I want you to describe uh, their running pattern. And then runner B. I want you to do the same thing. All right, so go ahead and write your explanation and then I want you guys talking to each other about it, okay? So once you get an explanation, I want you to talk to your neighbor about uh, what you think is happening with runners A and B. Maybe even what kind of runner you are too, okay? So are you like more like runner B or runner A? Okay, so... Um, after looking at the problem again, I definitely think that the vertical axis is actually talking about speed. 
Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. Okay. So somebody describe runner A to me. What does runner A do in this race? Kayla? Yeah. Yeah. So he starts off like booking it. All right. Anybody see those runners in the race? They just start off right at the gun and they're like sprinting and you're like, yeah, they're going to burn out. Okay. So he starts off or she, I just lost my internet. Sad times. All right. Sorry. We lost that connection. All right. So runner A. All right. Well, y'all help me out. I know you're starting on big ideas. Um, runner A, what it happened to their speed? All right, they started off what? Sprinting. Sprinting. Yeah. Started off sprinting. Well, then y'all help me out with this one. All right, then, then he cramped up. <laughs> then he stopped. Stopped, had to get some water, got a cramp, something. Then when he started back, didn't quite have as much gas in the tank. Then uh, ran at a constant, a constant speed, but it was slower, much slower than when he started. That cramp is still bothering him. Then runner B, okay, runner B started off gradually, all right, so a gradual speed, gradually increasing the speed. Then sprinted, all right? So then that speed hit a sharp increase at the end. Then sped up at the end. Had a lot more gas left in the tank. Uh, and so we would say runner B definitely would be the one to win because they are sprinting at the end, whereas runner A is running much slower. So runner B would win. <clears throat> All right, and that's everything you need to know for today's lesson.